dedicated to the strength of the nation. Proudly, we hail. Yes, proudly we hail, starring Buff Cobb in Dottie's Dilemma, a United States Army and United States Air Force presentation. Now here's our producer, the well-known Hollywood showman, C.P. McGregor. Thank you, thank you very much, and greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to your theater of stars, where all your popular favorites of the motion picture world join us in plays we know you'll enjoy. Our star is the vivacious young actress, Buff Cobb, and the title of our story, Dottie's Dilemma. This is the story of a young woman cub reporter who sets out to scoop the veteran news hawks of the fourth estate to prove that she has brains to use along with her beauty. We'll have the curtain for Act One in just a moment, but first, here's your announcer with this message. Choose the career that offers all five. The U.S. Army offers you these five keys to a successful future. One, a career of service to country. Two, the right job for you. Three, continuous training for planned advancement. Four, lifetime security. Five, travel and recreation. Yes, men, choose the career that offers all five. Find out about the five keys to a successful future at your nearest U.S. Army and U.S. Air Force recruiting station. And now, once again, our producer. Act one of Dottie's Dilemma, starring Buff Cobb. Last week, love, as it does to all men, came to Ken Phillips, managing editor of the Evening Times. So he proposed to one of his employees, Dorothy Scott, a shy, sweet, modest little girl who, as our story opens, is rushing to her lover on wings of song. Ken, where are you? Well, anyway, she's rushing. Come out of there, Ken. Oh. I see you hiding under that desk. Uh, now, Dorothy. Uh... Do you know how long I've worked and labored and struggled on this paper without being given a big assignment? Yes, dear. Three weeks. Well, I want action, not a pension. You solemnly promised to let me be a reporter and send me out on a big story. And so I will, dear. I've just been looking through some of your work. Your style of writing has improved tremendously. Oh, Ken, do you really think so? Oh, I certainly do, darling. Now, take your Smith story, for example. Ah, uh, yes, here it is. Died. Smith Chauncey, 93. Services, 2 p.m. Forest Grove Cemetery. Oh, believe me, Dorothy, you have a natural flair for obituaries. Obituaries? I know what you're doing. You're trying to break my spirit. Honey, Superman couldn't even bend your spirit. I'll give you one last chance. You are going to assign me to something big, like, well, like Liquidation Incorporated. Oh, oh just like that? Yes, just like that. Well, that's fine. I thought you'd like it. My staff spends six months trying to uncover a mysterious organism that deals in wholesale murder, which for the time being we call Liquidation Incorporated. And you think you can solve it. Just like that. Yes, just like that. We don't know whether we're coming or going. I've got it all figured out. We're completely in the dark. I've got it all figured out. I think we finally found a stool pigeon who'll talk. I've got it all figured out. But right now all we know is that they're desperate killers. They've made four attempts to shoot me already. And last night, they got Detective Murphy... My bodyguard. Oh, no, not Murphy. He was such a nice guy. Oh, Ken, I can't believe ah, it. Ah, now do you want to go on the story? I'll get them for this if it's the last thing I do. Oh, sure, sure, you'll catch them. Yeah. You could. Yeah. The police can't. My best reporters can't. I can't. But you can. I can. Sure, oh, you could handle a story like this with ease. Oh, Ken, thanks. I knew you'd see it my way. Huh? See what? I only said that... I'll get to work on the case immediately. Yes, but I was only so kidding. Long, Ken. Uh, Dorothy, come back. Now, where shall I begin? Oh, who did that? It's me. Well, don't do it again. Hey, what's the matter? Is there something wrong with your valves? Hey, look, sister, I'm a piggy. You certainly are. Go away. Hey, look, tell a big shot in there to let me in and stop giving me the brush off. I'm the guy that can give him a lowdown on a liquid they some incorporated. Did you say? Liquid they some Hey, what's the idea? Get your hand out of my mouth. Oh, 
Don't say a word. We're being watched. Come on down the hall. I want to see you alone. Hey, but why you do this? Here, quick. We can talk in this broom closet. I don't want to go into no broom closet with you. What's the matter? Are you bashful? Get in there before somebody sees you. Now, sit down on that bucket. I don't like this. It ain't respectable. Go ahead. Sit down. Well, okay, okay, but quit pushing. Now, turn on the light, and I'll close the door. Now we can talk. Are you comfy? What do you mean, comfy? I've been trying to tell you this bucket I'm sitting in is full of water. Oh, well, that's fine. Now tell me everything you know about Liquidation Incorporated. Come on, come on, come on. Well, you see these handcuffs? Go ahead, look at them. And this wallet? Detective Sergeant Murphy. Yeah. That's a cop that was murdered last night. Why, you... Hey, let it go. I didn't do it. I didn't kill him. But uh, for 500 bucks, I can take you to the hideout of the gang that did. 500? No wonder they call you Piggy. Wait, now see how much I have in my purse. 20, 30, 40... Ah, ah, ah! Huh? No peeking. 45. That's all you got, a 45? No, no, wait. Here's another one. Huh? 46 cents. Cents? And some peanut brittle. How do you like the big business? But I could get $50 out of my Christmas club and pay you the rest after I get the story. How do I know I can trust you? Oh, that's silly. Just look at me. Yes, sir, I am, and that's what worries me. You sort of remind me of a Sadie Smith. Who's Sadie? It's a friend of mine who's to live in a bigger house. You'd have dared a ring her for her, except that Sadie was a classy dress. You mean if I wore a bright red dress and carried a violin case, I could pass for a lady gangster? <laughs> Sadie was a no gone mild. She was a poison queen. Me and a Lucy Borger, that's what she used to say. Me and a Lucy Borger, we got a racket. Me and Lucy Borger. Piggy, will you take me there for $50 cash and the rest when I get the story? Well, if you ain't got a rest handy, I guess I'll have to. Now, here's the setup. I'm going to take you to kill as a hideout as soon as I get a tickets. Good Lord, they don't sell tickets. No, train of tickets. It's about a 50 miles out of town. I'll get a compartment so we won't be seen a traveling together. I'll meet you at my place in about one hour. Where is your place? It's down the street a couple of blocks. Uh, up the stairs from the fish market. Well, I'll see you later, Piggy. Hey, don't you want the address? Oh, don't worry about me. I'll find it. Ha, <laughs> today's Friday. <laughs> Uh, upstairs over a fish market. All right, boys, break it up, break it up. And keep this stairway clear. If I come down in a hurry, I won't be yelling scat. Well, I guess this is it. Piggy! Boy, what an echo. Piggy, are you busy? Would you rather I came back later? Unlocked all the time. Oh, hello, Piggy. <coughs> Blood! Oh, you're sick. Listen, I'm a god to tell you something before I die. Die? Oh, no, 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 you can't do that. Wait here. I'll phone the police. No, there's no time. Find... Find a man with a scar. You just leave everything to me and I'll... Who? The big fellow shot me. Head of liquid basin in a corporate. He's got a scar on arm. A scar all the way from elbow to wrist. Is this his gun? That's his. Well, can't you think of anything else to identify him? Uh, scar. I know, but I can't very well go around town asking all the men to take their coats off. I mean, Piggy. Piggy, wake up. Wake up. Oh. Oh, he died. Oh, the phone. phone. Hello. Hello, operator. Oh, the wire's cut. Oh, gee, oh, gee, oh, gee, Ken. I've got to tell Ken. Oh, excuse me. Oh, you frightened me. I... I didn't know you were here. Yeah. You see, I've been watching this house for several days. Go on, get back in there. Oh, you're... You're a detective. I mean... <clears throat> you're a detective. Yeah. I heard some shots up here. Uh... Well, oh, I'm so glad you're a detective. Something terrible has happened. A man's been... Well, uh... Oh. Oh, dear, you don't think that... Don't I? I suppose it's only a coincidence that you're holding a gun and there's a body lying over there on the floor. Body? Yeah, body. Uh, over there. Oh, that one. Yeah, that one. Uh, 
of embarrassing, isn't it? Come on. What is this murdered man doing here? I don't know. I guess it's just one of those things. Well, I'll have to be getting along, Mr. Uh, uh, I don't believe we've met. My name is Scott. Dorothy Scott. Oh, pleased to meet you. My name is Williams. Jerry Wh- Hey, I don't care who you are. Why did you do it? But I tell you, I didn't do it. I was down here getting a story. I'm a reporter on the Evening Times. <laughs> These clothes I'm wearing are just a disguise. You want to see my credentials? Uh, yeah. Oh, you do? Yeah. And, uh, stop pointing that gun at me. Oh, it's empty, see? <laughs> well, it's empty now. Hey, give me that thing. <clears throat> now, what can you tell me about this man? He's dead. You don't say. Look, if I tell you everything I know about this case, will you let me have the story first when you make the arrest? Well, uh... It's all figured out. Everything boils down to one question. What? Who killed him? Now we're getting somewhere. The first clue is these handcuffs on the table. They belong to Detective Murphy, who was murdered last night. These were his bracelets? Ah, I'll take them for evidence. Okay. Now, Murphy was killed by Liquidation Incorporated, and Piggy squealed, so they slaughtered him. Mm -hmm. He was going to take me to their hideout. It was out of town, so he bought train tickets. Yeah? Well, here are some tickets in his pockets. Well, now, all we have to do is follow up that clue and catch the gang. Let me see what station the tickets are for. Never mind, never mind. I'm following up this clue myself. Oh, but you've got to take me with you. Now, look, I've got trouble enough on my hands. You stay here where it's safe until the coroner comes. But I... I'm going to follow up this ticket clue. Well, of all the nerves, you want to make the capture yourself. You want all the glory. Hey, wait a minute. Wait for me. Quick, Kitty, which way'd you go? Oh, you won't talk, eh? Okay. <coughs> Sorry, but I gotta know. Nobody's gonna muscle in on my murder. <laughs> The curtain screeches down on act one of our play, Dottie's Dilemma, starring Buff Cobb. In just a moment, act two. First, a word from our government. High school graduates, there's an important place for you in the U.S. Air Force. You can continue your education, learn a trade, get ahead, and at the same time earn good pay. The United States Air Force has openings for specialists in air transport, aircraft maintenance, research, clerical administration, radio, and many other fields. The Air Force will train you for one of these responsible jobs. Two kinds of training are open to you. You can learn on the job under world's most skilled experts, or if you qualify, you can go to the finest Air Force technical schools as vacancies exist. You'll find interesting work, job security, sound retirement benefits, and opportunity for travel. This is your big opportunity. Look into it today. Get full details at your nearest Air Force base, our United States Army and United States Air Force recruiting station. Act two of Dottie's Dilemma, starring Buff Cobb. Dottie, hot on the trail of a gang which deals in wholesale mayhem, won't be shaken off by anything from threats to bribes. Having made some important discoveries with Jerry, a man whom she believes to be a detective, she cannot accept his suggestions that she remain somewhere in safety while he goes on looking for the gang. She has chased after Jerry, followed him onto the train, and now stands at the door of his compartment. Come in. Oh. Holy smokes, how did you get on this train? Now, Jerry, don't be angry. I have some new evidence. What evidence? Do you have Murphy's handcuffs? Yeah, here they are. Why? Well, I just remembered there's something funny about them. Give them to me. Yeah. Look, when I snap one on your wrist, like this, uh-huh. and one on my wrist, like this... Well? Then we can't get them off, can we? Hey, what are you driving at? This story is very important, and I'm going to see that I'm with you when you make the arrest. Why, you crazy little fool out. <laughs> Don't be mad, Jerry. I can help you. Really, I can, because I'm the only one who can identify the murderer. Ah. You've uh, seen him? No. But I know that he has a scar on his arm. Yeah? Yeah, a long scar that runs from his elbow to his wrist. I see, yeah. Uh, you mean, uh, like this? Yes, that's it. Exactly like the one you had there on your arm. See, but... Oh, it runs from the... It runs from the... Oh, you the... Ah, 
Why, you would lose the key. Ouch! Hold still, sister. You would interfere. Okay. So now when I get these things off, you can make yourself comfortable here. This hideout doesn't look very inviting. It was your idea, sister. Stop calling me sister, brother. Quiet. Ah. Now that those things are off, we can get down to business. Broderick. Uh, what's keeping that guy? Broderick. Yeah, yeah, here I am, Jerry. We have a friend here who's suffering from a painful curiosity. I think we ought to put her out of her misery. Do you think you can do a nice, clean job? Well, I ain't missed yet, have I? What do you mean? You've missed that newspaper guy Phillips four nights in a row. Oh, Jerry, that ain't my fault. No, he works late at night. I gotta pass the time somehow, so as usual, I have a few beers while I'm waiting. Then when him and his twin brother come Him out, and his twin brother. Yeah, yeah. Now, you get rid of this dame and then take care of Phillips, you okay, understand? Okay, okay. Because if you don't take care of him tonight, I'm going to take care of you. Okay, okay. Uh, come on, baby. Uh, Want to ride in the front seat with me? I'm not going to ride anywhere. Uh, come on, babe, now. Come on, come no, on. No, 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 no. Let me go. Ah, here's the place. Ah, ain't it? Why is the ground all torn up? Ah, oh, that's just a new grave. You know, cemetery is the safest place for this sort of thing. Now, look, uh, sweetheart, you just stand right over there. Oh, don't shoot me. Please, please don't. I'll do anything. I'll pay you. I can get money. No, no, I can't take no money. Well, I'll go away somewhere. Nobody will know the difference. You can tell them I'm dead. I'm sorry, sister. Come on now. Be a good girl and get right over there. That's all right. it. Are uh, you ready there? I'm ready. That's good. Okay, now. One, two... Three. There. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. How, how do you feel? I... I can't feel anything. I knew it. I knew it. I missed again. I don't know what's the matter with me. I just can't hit nothing. All right, Broderick, dear, so you missed. Yeah. Let's call it off. After all, murder must be pretty monotonous for you. Mm. Why, when you've seen one, you've seen them all. Hey, peace, boy. And besides, you know, Jerry's the boss. Why? Huh? Why is he the boss? Why, anybody could see you're the brains of that outfit. Why, that guy's getting away with murder. Yeah, yeah, he sure is. And after I kill you, I'm going to tell him a thing or two. Say, um, tell me, why does he want to kill you anyway? I know too much. I'm too smart for him. Yeah, you in the rackets too? Ha! Am I in the rackets? Ever hear of Sadie Smith? You? You ain't Sadie, the poison queen. Ain't I? Me and Lucy Borgie, we got a racket. Broderick? Yeah? Together we could make such wonderful music. Hmm. All we have to do is get Jerry out of the way and take over the mob. Hey, now, look, wouldn't that be something? You and me just take that easy and bossing everybody around. <laughs> Say to you, uh, tell me something. Do you think you could ever learn to, you know, like a guy like me? Broderick, I've got great plans for That's you. so. <laughs> Come on, let's go somewhere and celebrate. Oh, no, 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 no. I gotta kill that Phillips guy. Somebody or my life won't be worth a nickel. You mean to say you gotta let a little thing like that spoil our evening? Huh? Listen, I'll tell you what I'll do. I'll call Ken Phillips and have him meet us at the Conga Club. Oh, say, and then we'll do the job there, huh? Why not? Been thinking about murdering him for a long time. Come on, let's find a telephone. <laughs> Hello? Hello, Evening Times. Let me speak with Mr. Phillips. <laughs> oh, boy. Ain't this swell? A murder and dancing all in the same night. Hello, Ken. What do you mean, yes, dear? I haven't told you who I am yet. Well, it's me. Now, don't ask any questions. Hurry right over to the Conga Club. There's somebody I want you to meet. Yes, a friend of mine. He's very clever. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I tell you, he's wonderful. He'll kill you. Understand? He'll simply kill you. And when you come, bring along some C-O-P-S. Yes, C-O-P-S. Goodbye. Uh, what'd you tell him? What's, uh, what's that stuff, that, uh, that business, that C-O-P-S? What well, is it? I just asked him to bring along some gendarme. Oh, he don't have to bring nothing. The drinks is on us. <laughs> Should have been here half an hour ago. I don't know what can be keeping him. Uh, you know, some people just got no consideration at all. Uh, Sadie, uh, I, uh, still think you ought to let me... Oh, here he comes now. Dorothy, 
Dorothy, will you please explain the meaning of this? Why did you call me up and insist that I could? Ken, I want you to meet Broderick. He's the one I was telling you about. Uh, sit down, buddy. Have a drink. <laughs> uh, give it to him, Sadie. Broderick has been waiting to get together with you for several days, but he's always missed you. He's missed you four times. Do you understand? Huh? Yeah, have a drink, buddy. Have a drink. We got one all ready for you. Go ahead. Give it to him, Sadie. Uh, Sadie? Yeah. But who's Sadie? What is this? Uh, what did you say over the telephone? Go on, go on. Have a drink, buddy. Oh, thank you, thank you. I need one. Ah, well, that's better. Now, Dorothy, for the last time, what is the meal? Ken! Ken, what's the matter, darling? Oh. Ken, dear, what happened? Tell me what happened. Well, that's over. Come on, let's dance. But I didn't put anything in his drink. I know, I know. She was taking so long, you see, I went ahead and poured some red poison in his glass. You what? Sure. Oh, Ken, it's all my fault. I'll, I'll get you to a hospital. Help! Help! Hey, hey, what's going on? What's the matter? Don't stand there, you fool. Help! 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 Get a stomach pump. Get a huh? stomach pump. Come on, come on, you heard it. Go on, get a stomach pump. Hi, Mr. Phillips, new bodyguard man. What happened? You tell him, Broderick. Hurry up, tell him. Come on, tell all me. right, all right. We poisoned the guy. What? We tried to shoot him all week, but... Uh, but she, I, I, I gave him the red poison. What? We have to get into a hospital and arrest that man. Arrest oh, him. Oh, sure, lady. Quick, sure. quick, quick. You heard what she said. Arrest me, arrest me. No, no, Sadie, what are we doing? I tell you, lock him up. He's a killer for Liquidation Incorporated. Okay, okay, lady, take him away, boys. Come on, no, you. wait a minute. I said that all I was doing. Oh, Dorothy. Oh, Ken. Uh, a drink. Give me a drink. Of course, darling. Here you are. Drink it down. Yes, thank you. Uh, oh. Ken. Oh, jeepers, I've done it again. <laughs> Ken, darling, you're going to be all right. The nurse said it was just like a bad stomachache. Uh, to think I'd come to this, drinking rat poison. Darling, it's no worse than a lot of the other stuff you drink. Ken, can you sit up? I want you to see the paper. Uh, paper? We scooped the town. Broderick confessed last night, and they've caught the whole gang. Look, here's a picture of them on the front page, with me pointing my finger at them. Oh, I love reporting crimes. From now on, I'm going to specialize in murder. Uh, excuse me, ma'am. I'm from headquarters. Is uh, this your picture here on the front page of the paper? Mm-hmm. Yes, that's me. Uh, I thought I recognized you. What is it? Another murder? Yeah, murder. I've been looking for you ever since you escaped last week. Escape? Come on, Sadie. You mean you think I'm... You're under arrest. Oh, but I'm not Sadie. Can't tell him who I am. Uh, you tell him. What's the matter with him? Oh, nothing, nothing. I've just been poisoned. But I... Poisoned? At it again, huh, Sadie? Now, come along quietly, or... Ken, do something. He thinks I'm Sadie. They'll put me in jail. Oh, they may even hang me. Well, don't just lie there grinning. Well, don't worry, darling. I'll drop by one of these days and get you out. Why, you, you, you... After I'm sure you're fed up with murder. Come on, Sadie, get going. Uh, I'll bring the minister when oh. I come. Uh-huh. Bye-bye, dear. All right. All right, don't tell him who I am. Let him think I'm Sadie. Let him think I'm the poison queen, but I'm warning you, Ken Phillips, when we get married, when we have our wedding supper, I wouldn't drink anything if I were you, brother. And there's our play, Dottie's Dilemma. In a moment, our star, Buff Cobb, will return for a curtain call. Now... Here is Wendell Niles. Nurse anesthetists, did you know that you may be eligible for appointment in the Army Nurse Corps Reserve in the grade of captain? The requirements are seven years of professional nursing experience, one year practicing anesthesiology, and of course your certificate from the American Association of Nurse Anesthetists. A captain's base pay is $313.50 monthly plus subsistence allowance. Write for further details today to the Surgeon General, Department of the Army, Washington 25, D.C. Now, once again, our star and our producer. Welcome back to the microphone, Buff Cobb. You made a very charming newspaper reporter. Thank you, C.P. I've enjoyed being here so much. And Grandpappy always wanted me to be a reporter. I think this is as close as I'll get. Of course you mean Grandpappy Cobb. Yes, Irvin Cobb was my grandfather. And as he started out to be a newspaper reporter, he always told me I should be Do one. Do you think you'll choose writing for a career? No, I think I'll stick to the movies and the stage. Oh. 
Well, I have written several articles for Vogue magazine, and I guess I'll continue to do so from time to time. There's one thing that you are gifted with, and that's the Irving S. Cobb sense of humor. Everybody loved him, Buff. Oh, thank you, C.P. That's very sweet of you, and a great compliment to me. Now, Buff, suppose you tell us something about Paducah, Kentucky. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> My grandfather covered that little subject completely. I wouldn't <laughs> attempt to talk about it. Won't you tell us just one little thing about Paducah? Yes, I love it. But I've got to be going. <laughs> Goodbye, C.P. Goodbye, Buff. Hey, aren't you going to invite me back again? Why, of course, Buff. We'd love to have you any time. Well, thank you. But before I go, who is your star for next week? Next week, Buff, and ladies and gentlemen, the young and very popular Richard Long will join us as the star of an exciting story of a scientist, The Magic Darkness. This is the story of a man and woman, two scientists, who dedicate their lives to a single purpose and prove that when two elements have an affinity, they are difficult to separate. Be sure to join us. And now, until next week, then, thanks for listening, and cheerio from Hollywood. courtesy of the Hollywood Coordinating Committee, which arranges for the appearance of all stars on this program. The script was by Robert Riley Crutcher with the music of Eddie Dunstetter. This program is transcribed in Hollywood for release at this time. Wendell Niles speaking.